Hello, brav. We're back with the six black presidents. Black blood, white masks. We shall start the chapter on Abraham Lincoln. Why do people always expect authors to answer questions? I am an author because I want to ask questions. If I had answers, I'd be a politician. Eugene Ionesco. Abraham Lincoln, 16th president, USA. The so-called official book of facts and United States presidents said that Abraham Lincoln's ancestry was English. Lincoln described himself as having a dark complexion and coarse hair. hair. William Henry Herndon, Lincoln's law partner, said that Lincoln had very dark skin. The contents of one book written in 1863 state that Lincoln's mother was of the Ethiopian tribe tribe, that is. Old 1800s white Southerners said that Lincoln was of Negro ancestry, but Woodrow Wilson wrote that Lincoln came of the most unpromising stock on the continent, the poor white trash of the South. Wilson's statement, Simon, a house divided, page two. So some say that he was a black president, others say he was not. Abraham Lincoln was from the newly formed Republican Party. This party became the dominant party during the Civil War and the subsequent Reconstruction period. Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. His term was from March 4, 1861 until his death on April 15, 1865 from an assassin's bullet. His murder was a conspiracy. He was killed by people who disagreed with him on such political issues as slavery saving the union between the North and South, and inevitably, economics. It is my contention that Lincoln's obscure ancestral background may have played a major part in the easy decision to assassinate him. Abraham Lincoln had not been in the White House very long when he realized that he had a combination of a military and a social war on his hands. Lincoln is the Civil War president, the president said to have freed the slaves and joined the states. The war had many names, Mr. Lincoln's War, the War Against Slavery, the War of the Sixties, the Brothers' War, and others. The Mythological Man. Abraham Lincoln has been dead for 125 years now, yet many of us know his birthday by heart. Most get a free day from school or work. 90% of the literature on Abraham Lincoln states that he was a great man, a great leader, and the great president. He is, however, the man who sent hundreds of African Americans off to Haiti because he felt that colonization would be the best living environment for both blacks and whites. These African people were sent to this island with menial food supplies, and most of them died. Lincoln did, however, one year and two months later, send for the survivors. Well, so much for good old honest Abe, whatever color he was. Whether Lincoln believed in freedom for African Americans or not, he still did not want to live with nor be near them. I added the B part, obviously. This, of course, implies that he must have had a difficult time living with himself. I was 11 years old, riding on a big old orange school bus when I thought, do I trust Abe Lincoln? Was he really honest? Did he free black people? Our sixth grade teacher had been teaching a fictitious, I know this now, Abe Lincoln story that day. This school lesson was around 10 o'clock that morning, and here it was 2.45 p.m., and I was still thinking about this lesson. I had some serious doubts that Lincoln really freed black people. Of course, I learned later that there were many f fact stories about incidences on the plantation Whereas many a so-called master was found dead, beat to death, or strangled by a strong-willed and tired enslaved African determined to be free. Whites were beginning to be afraid that all enslaved persons, blacks, Africans, would begin to plea, flee, and ultimately fight for their God-given birthright to be a free people. We remain in a continuous struggle for freedom even today. So I know that the freedom we do have, we acquired ourselves. I didn't feel that Lincoln was what teachers, historians, politicians, the media, and others said he was. As far as I was concerned, he was probably more or less than what they said he was. Lincoln couldn't even free his own mind, so it is unlikely that he could free a whole race of people. Juhudi Amin Ra, the author of Shattering the Myth of the Man Who Freed the Slaves, 
says that as long as we accept the myth of the man who freed the slaves, we will always be victimized by mental enslavement. He deplores that when our children grow up thinking that Lincoln, Honest Abe, freed people who had been enslaved, then African Americans grow up thinking that the white man liberated them. Abraham Lincoln did not free the slaves. The African people freed themselves. In the preface of Stephen B. Oates' book, With Malice Toward None, page 15, I don't know why it says XV, maybe that's an intro, oh, it's the preface. He writes about the Lincoln of mythology and the folk hero. He comes to us in the mists of legend as a homespun rail splitter from the Illinois prairies. A saintly commoner who called himself Abe spoke in a deep fatherly voice and cared little about material rewards and social station. He also comes to us as Father Abraham, the great emancipator who led the North off to civil war to free the slaves, and after the conflict ended, offered the South a tender and forgiving hand. Lerone Bennett Jr., the famous historian, our historian, says that Lincoln had a wonderful sense of the ironic and ridiculous, and that all of the mythical and mysterious things that have been erroneously gone down in history that have erroneously gone down in history about his political beliefs, Lincoln would find amusing. Bennett states, in the general literature, Lincoln is depicted as an eloquent and flaming idealist, wailing away at the demon of slavery. This view is almost totally false. In the first place, Lincoln was an opportunist, not an idealist. Bennett Ebony was Abe Lincoln, a white supremacist, 1968. Abraham Lincoln asserted, whatever you are, be a good one. When it came to the necessity of being a whole person who had a good sense of identity, Lincoln was not a good one. But when it came to the business of being mentally ill, but functional in the political arena of a, of a racist, racist 1800s America, he was pretty good. But who is Abraham Lincoln? The Hugh man. It's pretty good, Hugh man. It is said that Abraham Lincoln was born February 12, 1809 in Hardfin County, Kentucky, a slave state. Abraham Lincoln is the immortal president who is admired by many. His mother was Nancy Hanks Lincoln, and his father is said to have been Thomas Lincoln. Questioning surviving Kentucky pioneers, Herndon found some who doubted that Thomas could have fathered the president, or anyone else for that matter, Simon, page two. According to Herndon, Thomas Lincoln was castrated at some point during his lifetime. However, he could not ascertain as to the exact date that this emasculation took place. Was Herndon or some surviving pioneer who knew the Lincoln family lying? If so, why? Was Thomas Lincoln castrated before or after his marriage to Nancy Hanks? Or, more precisely, was he castrated before or after Lincoln's birth? Seeing it written that Thomas Lincoln was castrated gives more prudence to questions surrounding Abraham Lincoln's birth. Was Lincoln's biological father an African man of some 1800s white Southerners and the well-known African-American anthropologist and writer J.A. Rogers contend? Or was the father one of the white men mentioned in the article, the many sired Lincoln? The book, The Genesis of Lincoln, or a mere, more recent work, White House Tales, by Webb Garrison. Abraham Lincoln began his life in a log cabin under suspicious circumstances. Lincoln witnessed the burial of his little two-year-old brother. The grave was located directly outside the cabin window. Again, it is not known who may have sired this child. In Herndon's and Lamont's literary works about Lincoln, it is written that Thomas Lincoln once caught his wife with another. Thomas and the man fought so violently over this matter that Thomas Lincoln ended the fight by biting off the man's nose. The story sounds a little far-fetched and somewhat reminiscent of a true Napoleon Bonaparte story. Napoleon and his gang tromped over to Comet and proceeded to knock and shoot the noses off many of the magnificent statues there because the statue's magnificence did not favor them in facial features. Lincoln's beloved mother, Nancy, died when he was only nine years old. While the coffin was being built, the deceased mother lay in the same room where the entire family cooked, ate, read, and slept. 
Other close relatives with whom little Abe loved died around this same time in 1818. A year later, Abe was kicked by a horse, and as Lincoln puts it, this injury killed him for a time. More trauma. As a young boy, Lincoln almost drowned and was saved by a neighborhood teenager. As a young teenager himself, Lincoln witnessed the initial dementia of a young male neighbor. Lincoln wondered for the rest of his life why this young man lost his mind. Lincoln was so moved with wonderment and sadness over this episode that he wrote a poem about its occurrence. At the age of 19, Lincoln lost his older, adored sister, Sarah. She died trying to have a baby. The stillborn baby, Lincoln's niece or nephew, was buried in her arms. Lincoln also lived to bury two of his own children. Lincoln was called ugly by his peers, and his father was forever picking on him. Abraham Lincoln and his father, Thomas Lincoln, never had a good, healthy relationship. Some form of child abuse is suspected. Throughout this chapter, you will notice that Lincoln exhibited many of the symptoms typical of an adult survival survivor of child abuse. Some symptoms are depression, psychosomatic illness, self-destructive thoughts and, and or behavior, eating problems, anxiety, personal and intimate relationship difficulties, sense of unreality, intrusive thoughts and images, sleep disturbances such as nightmares, and abrupt switches in personality and thought. You will read within the confines of this chapter, including new theories, old theories, and many references, that Lincoln was a manic depressive tending toward dissociative states of mind and multiple personalities. His melancholia is a well-known fact. Lincoln has recently been said to have been a victim of Marfan's syndrome, he was a hypochondriac bisexual tending towards homosexuality who always thought of death. He was a fatalist. White people said that he had Negro blood and was called names such as Africanus, the first from Liberia, the ancient sooty and swarthy, i.e. black. He had black blood running through his veins. He did not have all the problems mentioned above because he had back black blood no, to the contrary, he had these problems because he lived in a racist, fatalist society with red, blue, and white blood who thought that having a little black blood would sooty up their America. Dr. Kenneth Clark contends that the negative effects of white American racism on the personality development and psychological harmony of African Americans are unmistakable. The thought of Lincoln openly revealing his true ancestry probably made him tremble. Over 10,000 blacks a year pass for white. Operation, operational definition fail for white. Every year in the United States in order to get away from racism, discrimination, and prejudice. Television program, Tony Brown's Journal, 1988. Of course, Lincoln's many bizarre and puzzling problems and personalities do not exclude the problems he acquired from his obscure family background and his chaotic and possibly abusive childhood. Literature written by Lincoln and others attest to the fact that Lincoln was an extremely melancholic person and possibly a manic depressive. There was something more to Lincoln's lifetime of brooding, suffering, sadness, and melancholic personality than the death of his mother. There was something more, much more in death. Sigmund Freud points out that such an individual hates himself only a little more than he loves himself. Menninger, page 41. Lincoln's problems and traumas were doubled and tripled. Dr. Kenneth Clark states that dark-skinned children are taught at an early age to hate themselves. Very few ever lose that sense of shame and self-hatred. Multiple personality disorder or syndrome is usually caused by trauma of trauma, traumata of life. These are mental injuries which the primary personality simply could not handle. So the mind disconnected and the traumata no longer longer existed. Why aren't blacks in therapy? Oh, this is from his book. It should be noted, however, that people with multiple personality disorders or dissociative tendencies can function normally as far as we can see. They can certainly function well enough to become president of these United States which is which it was then as today an absorbing joke. Lincoln, although a melancholic and sad person most of the time, had another self who liked body stories, songs, and jokes. Another mask? Lincoln was a minstrel show Negro ditties. Was a minstrel show Negro ditties? 
dirty joke telling, smutty poetry, writing enthusiast. He would often ask his lawyer, biographer, and banjo playing friend Ward Hill Lamond to sing a very demeaning song, if you will, about a young African servant entitled The Blue Tailed Fly. They would then commence to stamp their feet to ignorance. They used to have tails, you know. Lincoln was also fond of listening to songs about mulattoes. Why? Lincoln was an overcompensating multiracial who went to extremes to try to prove himself worthy and white. His show of racism, racism was a sign of his sickness, his confusion. His racism was minus the direct physical violence, perhaps because such an act would have been totally against his African nature. This side of the African is usually used for survival reasons, or when an African or Africans have been provoked and demeaned into a type of mental illness. Killing one another is a senseless societal defeat, and sometimes, but not often, killing others. I will probably stop at that point, because this next section is about five pages long, and I don't think I have enough stamina. Or camera time left under the 30-minute mark to get to it. So until next time, Nancy Hawks, Hanks awaits us. Goodbye.